welcome to More Than a Song, where you get a chance to experience great music in an intimate concert setting. You will also get a chance to go beyond the lyrics with the artist to get the God experience revealed in their journey. I'm Denise Graves, and on today's show, we will feature Meredith Andrews. She has always had a gift for writing honest, compelling songs that resonate powerfully with an audience. Over the course of her first two albums, people have come to appreciate the Dove Award-winning artist's love for God and her heart for people. Take a close listen to her first set of songs today.
Meredith Andrews recently stated, even in the storms and the trials of life, even when we feel like God is far away, the truth is he's always constant. He never changes. He's always good. His heart for us is kind. The worship leader writes what God lays on her heart. Let's take a closer look with Terry Black and Meredith's interview. I have been following your music since you've been in college, which was just like last year, right? Oh, yeah. We can <laughs> pretend like it was. Okay. And um, that you were a student at Liberty University. Yes. And I remember hearing some of your music. My girls, I have four kids, and um, my girls were the ones that uh, introduced me to your music. Yeah. And so I've always been blessed. And so before we talk about you as the um, musician, let's talk a little bit about who you are. Tell us about your how, where, you, where you were born sure. and, and that kind of stuff. Well, I grew up in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we went to a small church, my parents and I did, um, the kind of church where if you are on staff in any capacity, you actually pull double duty, you yeah. know? So sure, sure. my mom mm -hmm. was over the children's ministry, but she also led worship like every other Sunday. And my dad was a deacon, and then he cut the grass every other Saturday, <laughs> you know? And so I feel like I grew up 
under a pew, essentially. Uh -huh. and, but I love that. I, I love the, the heritage that I have in that mm -hmm. and the, the kind of church that I went to. Um, you know, my youth group, we would spend nights, all nights, praying together. And we wow. had a youth ministry, a youth event, like every Saturday night called the Potter's House. And just, I can't tell you just how the Lord cultivated my desire just to be in His presence and to lead people into worship through that. Wow. That's kind of where I started leading worship. I was going to ask, have you always, even as a <clears throat> young, young child, or not young child, teen, that you did you were singing? Yes, okay. I started singing when I was six. That was the first time I ever sang a solo oh, in church. Cool. And my mom and I did some Southern gospel music together when uh -huh. I was really little, just in area churches. And then uh -huh. when I was 12, I started singing back up and playing tambourine for our youth band. Oh, and then okay. that kind of, by the time I was 15, I was leading worship and playing keys for our youth band. And so um, that's kind of how it all started. Mm -hmm. And then when I graduated from um, high school, I went on to Liberty University, mm -hmm. uh, like you mentioned, Mm -hmm. and was on a couple teams there, one that traveled, and then my last two years, one that led worship for all our campus services. So your heart has always been, it seems, not just in singing, right. but in leaning worship. And, yes. and so if you want to share some, some of your um, yeah. experiences with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, um, I remember when I was 17, I went to a Rebecca St. James concert. I remember her. Yeah, uh -huh. she was one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And I... I went away from that concert going, Lord, I, I would love to do something like that, but I don't know what it's supposed to look like, and mm -hmm. I don't know what you have in store. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is, I just surrender this gift to you. I surrender this desire to you. And the Lord said to me so clearly that night, it was a very defining moment in my life. And he just said, Meredith, be faithful where I've placed you. Mm. And at the time, you know, I'm leading worship for my youth group and sometimes on Sundays at my church. And so I'm just like, okay, I just, I'm going to grow where I'm planted. And I'm going to be faithful here. And the Lord is going to do what he wants to do. And I feel like I'm, my life is just a testimony of that. Like mm. God has opened the doors. I haven't had to push anything over. Oh. I haven't had to manipulate any circumstances or situations or I've just gone, okay, Lord, help me to be faithful in this. Because I'm a firm believer that when you're faithful where God has you, like it's it's so important even in that season, even if you don't feel like God is using you to the fullness of what he's going to, right. he's preparing you. Absolutely. You know? And if yes. not, he's not going to give mm -hmm. us everything all at once because mm -hmm. we might not be able to handle it. Oh. You know, he's building our Absolutely. character and teaching us how to, to work mm -hmm. hard and be responsible and to count it as the privilege that it is. And mm -hmm. for me, now that I'm on staff at a church in Chicago leading worship for mm -hmm. our people, I, you know, I was telling you earlier mm -hmm. as we were getting ready, I, sometimes I'll just stand there and cry because mm -hmm. I love being in the presence of God and I love being in the presence of the Lord with His people and getting just to, mm -hmm. to go, hey guys, this is, this is the best part of our week that we Absolutely. get to approach the throne of grace together mm -hmm. and we get to go before the Lord together and and when we're in the presence of God that's when he does things like it mm -hmm. changes us and hopefully we're not the same as when we walk, first walked in oh, the door. Yeah. What an honor that you have to lead and usher people into yes. the presence of God through worship, through yes. music. I understand that you also write a lot of your songs with yes. you and your husband. Yeah. And, and so that's, uh, that's amazing to me. Does he give you um, uh, inspiration and, and it, it cultivates from there? Yeah, sure. When I was 12 was when I first started writing mm -hmm. and, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. I wrote a song with six verses and no chorus. I guess I thought I was a modern day hymn writer, <laughs> you know, but you got to start somewhere. That's and right. uh -huh. back then I would put all of my songs on a cassette tape. I'd play them on my little keyboard, put them, record them on a cassette tape, and then I'd send them with the lyrics to Washington, D.C. to the copyright office because mm -hmm. I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, at least they're legit now, you That's know, right. they're copyrighted. Right. Um, but yeah, you, the Lord is growing me and my songwriting as well. And you know, a lot of the ways that I write is just out of seasons of life and mm -hmm. what God is teaching me, what God is showing me through His Word. And mm. actually, I just wrote a song this week, um, just a few days ago, um, just kind of out of that, like something that the Lord has been saying to me. Um, and even like, you know, we've been on a tour together and right. it's something I've been able to share on, on this tour. But the fact that, you know, wherever people are in their mm -hmm. journey, that Jesus sees them. And so mm. I wrote a song the other day with my friend called Jesus Sees. And oh, I think that's wow. so important. And if yeah. you don't mind me sharing, Terry. No, like, no, that's awesome. Please do. Yeah. I, so I sat under um, some teaching from my good friend, Lisa Harper. I did mm -hmm. a women's conference with her recently. And she was talking about a passage. I believe it's in Mark 11, but I could be wrong. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's in Luke 7 because she was okay. going with two of them. Who <laughs> even knows? But, sorry, I don't have my Bible in front of me. But she was telling the story about this widow who had just lost her only son. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's um, in the Gospels. And 
Um, and Jesus sees her and mm. she's, they're going along in this funeral p procession and um, she's, her, I'm sure her head is down and she's so grieved. She's already mm. lost her husband and here she's lost her only son. And she's like, well, what am I supposed to do now? Like maybe mm -hmm. I should I'd just take me too because I don't have any other reason to live, you know? So it's just, you know, what I dialogue right. I'm thinking, you know, like, and um, what's so amazing about that is it, it says that Jesus sees her and is mm. moved with compassion. Mm -hmm. Like he just has compassion on her and he walks up to her and he raises her son from the dead. Yes, he and, does. And it, she didn't see him. She right. didn't ask Absolutely. that he would do that because she was so um, buried mm -hmm. in her grief. She couldn't see past her mm. grief, but Jesus saw her and he went to her. Mm -hmm. And I just love that so much because even no matter where we are in our lives, Jesus knows He is right there with mm. us. He's walking through the hard things with us and He sees us even if we don't see Him. That's and great. that's one of the, another kind of um, epiphany for me that I had was that, you know, I used to think that I would write songs out of my pursuit of God and my journey and walk mm -hmm. with the Lord. And, but it's actually, I write those songs because God is always pursuing me, even on the days when I'm not pursuing Him. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and that did mm -hmm. change my life. And I'm like, yeah. and praise God for that, because it takes pressure off of me. And I just go, wow, look at the grace and the patience and the kindness of God, mm -hmm. that He would pursue me, even on the days when I'm just like oblivious or I'm that's going right. the other way. That's you know? right. Well, I look forward to it. Um, Hearing that song. Yeah. Me, well, I, got, I, I can't sing it today because i got to practice it. But maybe mm -hmm. next time. We'll That'd, be That'd be great. That'd be great. Thank you so much for coming. It's yeah. been wonderful to get to meet you and know you and, and hear, hear more about how, you, how God's working in your life. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you Thank so much, Thank you very much.
Thank you for joining us for more than a song. We would love to hear from you. Contact us at family at ctvn.org or call us for prayer and we will agree with you for God to move in your life. Until next time, keep looking for the message behind the music and listen for the new song he sings over you. I'm Denise Graves and I'll see you next week.